Hello, and welcome to our podcast. For the last three years, Hope Church South Bedfordshire here in the UK has had people meeting on weekdays to discuss God's Word together. We've moved this discussion onto this podcast so others in our congregation, our area, and the wider world can enjoy God's Word along with us. In this episode, we're looking at the book of Mark in the New Testament, and we expect as we read, God will teach us and we will help each other learn more. As you listen to the prayer, the reading, the discussion, while you're listening, ask God to reveal things to your heart. The book of Mark was written so that you would come to know who Jesus is, and our desire is that we will all come to know him better as we look at this together. I'm just going to read for us. Word, help us to draw closer to you, Lord. And I pray that you will just bless us all. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The Triumphal Entry As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell him, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a goat doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered, as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Bob. And um, this morning's, um, and as you're looking at Mark, we're looking at how Mark reveals Jesus to us, how Jesus Mark wrote his book so that we would know about Jesus. And we've learnt as we've gone through the, the previous 10 chapters, loads about Jesus that have been brought out. And here we have Jesus entering Jerusalem. And the the background of this is, is a prophecy in Zechariah 9.9 that speaks of a triumphant king coming with victory over all his enemies into Jerusalem, sitting on the colt of a donkey. And that is an incredible thing. Um, Jesus says, go and take this colt. You'll find it there. And I'm going to ride on it into Jerusalem. This is like a public statement of saying, I am the Messiah. And, and this is something that Jesus has taken action on to reveal himself. And so as he arrives on the donkey, everyone gets it, the, the joy of everyone. This is a triumphant. It's the end of all the enemies, the end of all oppression. It's the end of all of that. But people may have not fully understood mm-hmm. uh, the the sign of palm branches, uh, which you, you find thrown in the street and their cloaks thrown in the street is, is a, a real humility. Uh, before Jesus, but the palm branches are a sign of the nation. It's it's like uh, having a Union Jack for Britain, <laughs> waving Union Jacks. It's the equivalent uh, with palm branches. And there's this huge celebration um, of people coming into Jerusalem. It's just a whole party atmosphere. If you looked yesterday at, at Bartimaeus and his reaction to Jesus passing by, the joy and the celebration that must have been in him were in the whole crowd coming in. And there's a big celebration. This is it. 
Um, but at the same time, to every action, there is an opposite for reaction, not always equal. Um, and, and in this, there is opposition growing. But this is the first time that Mark tells us about Jesus and what he's doing without telling us about the misunderstanding of the disciples or the misunderstanding of the crowds or some of those things. It's just a triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And I don't want to say too much, uh, but there's a lot that can be said about this passage. Um, so I'll open it up. Uh, what um, struck me was bring the cult to him um, uh, and the cult had never been ridden and and what I to me he you know Jesus had such authority to be able to get on that cult who'd never been ridden and actually sit on it and ride and I'd never never really thought of that before um it took two disciples to walk, to bring the cult to him and um struck me that Jesus has authority over over everything in the world, even the animals. <laughs> mm. I remember growing up in Zimbabwe, we visited some friends of ours that had been childhood friends out in the middle of the bush and they were living there and they had donkeys. Mm. They were telling me how difficult it was to ride <laughs> and to train donkeys to be ridden on. And so the, it's quite miraculous. Jesus can ride on this cult. Um, the other accounts of the gospel give us another insight that the, the mother of the cult was there as well. So, so there was a donkey and cult. Mark focuses on the cult. And possibly because of its link with Zachari Zephaniah, where it, it's speaking about, um, you know, this yeah. this um, king riding in on a cult. It would be very hard to re ride that that cult, <laughs> um, but there seems absolute peace. There's, there's something incredible about this um, account. It, makes, it amazes me really, that people just, you know, they said um, the Lord needs them and they just let it let the cult go didn't they i suppose um they were just so uh, in awe of 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 jesus they they let him them take the donkey to him and um and i think the people were looking looking for a king weren't they looking for the messiah really they were looking for someone to um release them from the romans weren't they and um seeing jesus riding and they think this is it you know we're going to be released from the dark romans now you know he's going to He's going to come and reign, and yet that's not what it was all about, was it? It's, he's reigning in his own kingdom, which is a not an earthly kingdom, but it came on earth as well. Um, so they're looking for somebody, looking for him to rule over them in a, in a sort of um, a worldly way, but obviously that's not what he was going to do. Yeah. Shall I read out the passage from Zechariah? The verse nine says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And that's the verse that refers mm -hmm. to this written hundreds yeah. of years before. And, and that's what Jesus is fulfilling, that, that victory of coming into Jerusalem and, and, and fulfilling that prophecy. But I think everyone expected a massive over, because the, the context for that prophecy is nations being put right and the international standing of the nation being put right and everything coming under this mm -hmm. mighty warrior king and, and actually Jesus's kingdoms are very different to the kingdoms mm -hmm. of the world, and the crowd hasn't realised this. And in actual fact, the the joyful crowd, in this case, actually probably turn on him five days later. And and so you've you've got a fickleness in crowds. You've got a fickleness 
in in people's understanding you've got a lack of understanding a lack of full complete understanding about jesus but into this jesus demonstrates he's the messiah he's the one arriving he's the one fulfilling this prophecy he's the mighty king that has been prophesied that's an incredible statement in Mark. So people reading Mark's gospel back in the first century would have, or having it read out to them, um, would would have been incredibly, oh yeah, that that's that's Zechariah nine nine. If they had that in those days, but they would have known that's the prophecy. That's what it's about. It would be so clear, um, and and how everything's lined up for that. Even where, as Faith was sharing, where where the donkey is. Um, and and the fact that people are willing to let it go there, there's so many things um, that tie in with this triumphal entry into jerusalem another thing that's come to mind many people spread their cloaks on the road and mm. we had about um Bartimaeus yesterday who threw off his cloak yes. so, um, so almost like a um you know, a putting off away because they thought he he was the savior. Well, he's the savior, and I hadn't realised that Hosanna meant save either. Mm-hmm. But that's what in my notes yes. <laughs> as well. Yeah, save. I, think, save. Yeah. I just thought the same thing as you said that. I went back to yesterday. It was about the cloak, wasn't it? It's strange. Mm. It's really good. And then the branches, and they go in the fields, and that just brings to mind branches. You know, the other chapter about branches as tree. There's all sort of quirks in there of other passages. It uses the same thing sometimes, although it's branches. There's always branches. There's always fields, but um, fields of harvest and the branches, and they have to go into the fields and they have to spread the branches, and then they are cut in the fields. But, yeah. It, it was a lot of activity going on, as you say, so much joy, so much activity as well. They must be going rushing into the fields and cutting the branches and yeah, and, and all the shouting, the Osanas. Must have been a, a great a great thing to to witness. It's it's interesting the thing they're shouting is Hosanna. Yeah. Save, or save now, Lord. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a very powerful thing to shout, but they see Jesus as coming into Jerusalem as bringing salvation. Yeah. And, and actually, we're we're going to find out, we don't want to spoil too much of our journey, Mark, but we're going to mm. find out Jesus does bring salvation. Mm. And actually, um, it's not the salvation everyone was looking for. Yeah. Enemy that they perceived as the enemy was a far bigger enemy than the one that the people saw. Um, mm-hmm. Palm branches um, became famous during they reckon during the Maccabees, which is sort of this period in between the Old and New Testament where the Greeks actually ruled, and and uh, sort of the the empire of Alexander the Great and so on, um, and they they fought against that and were victorious under the Maccabees, the Maccabees revolt. And so um, in that, palm branches became the symbol of the nation. They became the Union Jack of the nation, if you like. Yeah. The of that time has, has palm branches on it and, and actually um, is a symbol of national pride. And so um, we've got that um <clears throat> symbol in because the people are interpreting it nationally but jesus is coming internationally um you know over the whole world um we, we, we'll find out um but yeah it's a very very powerful scene. i mean they were so joyful but it was jesus was sad wasn't he because he knew yeah. what but <laughs> would say too much but uh um, he went in another gospel that says he went and wept, didn't he? Because he knew what they were going to go through mm-hmm. because of what they're going to do as well. So, um, you know, to be full of joy and sorrow at the same time, really. As you say, no, crowds can suddenly just turn, can't they, from one thing to mm-hmm. another. Amazing how, you know, people makes a difference somehow. People follow the crowd, don't they? I mean, I don't want to rush ahead, but Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was late, already late, he went out. So he was obviously, was he going to do something then? But then it was too late. 
I don't know. That's the next bit, isn't it? Off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's already late. You went especially with the twelve. So yeah, but I wondered if there was something before he was going to go outside and do something with the twelve. With the crowds, um, they're all excited. The the whole entry is is the big thing. You know, you know, save now, Lord. All these. And then when he arrives, in, not early in the morning, where there'd be a whole day of what's he going to do. Um, it's evening time. He goes, wanders around Jerusalem, probably with it's all wandering around Jerusalem. Um, and then it's nighttime. So everyone wants to go. It, it leaves a pensive moment over Jerusalem. And in terms of kind of like keeping the peace in Jerusalem. There's a lot of things going on. The fact that such a massive crowd turned out to welcome him, mm-hmm. that so much was happening there. And and in that atmosphere, it's left hanging over Jerusalem. Yeah. What's coming next? And the timing of this is the Passover, which is yeah. the celebration of the victory of the Israelites coming out of Egypt and the victory over the most powerful nation of the time by them leaving with all the plagues and everything else. And so the celebration of Passover is a big thing. Jerusalem's probably swelled with numbers for the for the festival. Mm-hmm. And that you've got this big entry point of Jesus. And and then it's left over the city what's coming next coming next what's what's going to is this the thing that's going to change the nation when's it going to change what's going to happen mm. uh, and and i think politically it's destabilizing in a, in some ways because all the people in power suddenly realize oh we ousted from power by by um someone who's a messiah uh, we don't want that really and, yeah. and how governments work. Governments are not about the person at the top. It's very often about the people underneath that support the person at the top. And and when that person at the top changes, all the people underneath tend to change as well. And they lose their power and lose their position. And so there's a whole structure there that's possibly threatened by this as well. Yeah, just leading on, there's a lot of expectation and it just yes there's definitely a building up um but their their expectation isn't quite what's going to happen they they've got it a bit wrong really and it seems like uh, yeah there is a sadness i think because it's not going to turn out the way they're expecting it to and um, so, yeah, it's sort of, I can feel that sort of sense. Uh, but yeah, it, they, they got the wrong idea, really, haven't they? It's not all going to be overthrowing the Romans or that's not going to happen. Um, and they sort of have completely the wrong idea. So, yeah, it's sad. Jesus stirring up the crowd. He knows. He knows that. Well, he knows that, but they don't know that. But it, it's that. Yeah, she say they turn against him, and he must know that as well, in a way. But it's it's all part of the time, and isn't it? It's all part of mm-hmm. all part of the journey, which we know the end, but they don't. Which reminds me of Christmas sometimes. Everyone wants to celebrate the baby. And that's joyful and happy, and you get to Easter, and it doesn't mean so much to people sometimes. <laughs> they think, you know, that's why you come into the world, but you have to do. I was just wondering why he's entered his Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything. It's almost like he knew what was going to happen the next day, almost, you know. Um, but, but tomorrow, when we talk about that, but mm. you know, why did he look? He looked around everywhere. And yeah. I don't know why he did that because he really didn't have time to do that because it was late. But um, it's almost like he looked around to see what was in there, mm. and um, and then maybe he went he went to, with his disciples. He probably prayed to his father as well. 
who may have given him instructions and I don't know. Um, but Jesus looks around at everything we do, doesn't he? <laughs> you know, he knows mm-hmm. that that's going to happen. And, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. It's like being a watchman on the wall, really. Have to, he was looking all the time to see what, he knew what some of the things were going to happen and um, he was like preparing himself, maybe. We'd love to know the thoughts that go on in his head at this point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Must have been horrendous, really, because he knew what was going to happen. <laughs> but it's amazing, because really, even in like in this nation, and you know, if it, whoever's the prime minister or anything, everyone's all excited of the prime minister, and and then they t- they all seem to turn on them, don't they? Um, turn against them, and you know, it's human nature. It's, things aren't going quite the way that you think. You know, sometimes people turn completely the other way, don't they? Which is sad. Mm-hmm. Because we don't know the end from the beginning, but the Lord does. I was thinking, Nigel, about the um, when Jesus sent to Jerusalem and went to the temple, and I was thinking it must be very contemplative of um, Jesus and just talking to his father about mm. the whole situation. And, and, I, and I sort of think that was a time when <clears throat> maybe there was a bit of quiet in the temple um, that he could get away from the people and and just talk to yeah to God really and and yeah maybe prepare and, and just think uh, think about what happened during the day yeah we don't really know what he was thinking at this time do we it it doesn't tell us there's not yeah. the detail there we're, we're sort of missing that but yeah you could be right there Faith that's an interesting point not thought of that. Well, I think we'll uh, pass the time, but I'll just say a couple of things just to, to finish off. Sort of the application of this, we've been on a journey understanding who Jesus is. So when we arrive at this point, we're not joining the crowd thinking that this is it, it's trash the Roman times. <laughs> um, but actually, we're realizing there's a difference in Jesus's kingdom. We've been led that way by Mark to understand that. And the prophecy, the actual prophecy in Zechariah, in, in verse 11 uh, of chapter 9, says, um, As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today, I declare, I will restore to you double. And that's in the same passage that Jesus's arriving on a cult is mentioned. And people looking at Mark would have understood that the the broader context of some of this in one understanding, but not the fullness of it. But the mention of blood, the mention of um, setting free the prisoners, we begin to see the, the prophecy of Isaiah. Um, you know, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on you because he's mm. to you um, to preach good news to the poor, to declare release for the prisoners. And there's something of this messianic um, element that hasn't been noticed by the crowd. They've just noticed the cult. They've just noticed, oh, he's the Messiah. They haven't thought, what is this Messiah coming to bring? And for us looking at this, I guess our application point is, uh, who is Jesus to us? Is he the liberating Messiah who's come to set us free? Who's actually come to liberate us from the oppression that we, we, we're under in, 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 in the world since, since Adam and Eve? Actually, that oppression that's been there, the destructive force that's been there, he's come to set us free from all of that. And that's a powerful um, understanding. But we've got the clear insight of looking back over these things. I do feel for the people at the time of having Mm -hmm. to look into this. Um, The the fullness of understanding hadn't arrived, but it was there in the the New Testament church, very much alive. They were full of excitement about this. Right. Well, we'll leave it there. Thank you all for your comments. And we'll um, leave that pensive moment hanging over us till tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll follow through on Jesus's next actions. Um, as as we go, um, but thank you, everybody.
Thank you for joining us today. If you'd like to find out more about Hope Church South Bedfordshire, you can find out off our website www.hopecentral.co.uk. Also, you may like to visit us. We meet at a lovely old church uh, built in 1220 uh, in Tillsworth, part of Dunstable uh, wider area. And um, you're welcome to visit us. We meet at half 10 in the morning and you'd be most welcome to attend and meet us there or alternatively you can find us uh, broadcasting live on our youtube channel which is also under hope church south bedfordshire thank you very much for joining us hope god blessed you loads